You've got questions? Hopefully I've got some answers. Tonight, I answer your questions and do a couple of demonstrations. Stay tuned. Hey, really appreciate you tuning in today. My name is Scott, I am your host. Uh, welcome to Go Small, Live Large. We're a YouTube channel dedicated to van life in my Travado GL and sharing with you um, interesting stories about places and people we're gonna meet along the journey. So, welcome to another uh, Q&A Friday. This is where viewers uh, give a question and I answer the question. Maybe it's a demonstration of something here in the Travado or around the, the rig. So let's jump into the question, shall we? So viewer uh, Christina Sorrels asks, how is the Winnebago reimbursement coming along? And uh, you may have known that I had some warranty work done. Uh, the radiator hose had come loose and um, the um, alternator cut, uh, um, belt cut into the radiator hose causing the fluid, uh, fluid to leak out. Um, so it was about a $500 repair. And uh, I submitted the uh, repair bill. I had to pay it up front to the Dodge dealer because they were saying it was a Winnebago modification, not factory, uh, not factory work. Uh, so I had to pay them and then uh, submit re uh, expenses, um, submit, the re submit the expense back to Winnebago. So I did that to, to Mick at Winnebago Motorhomes, my dealer, and um, within seven days I received a check from him in the mail um, right here for um, $477. So warranty work check done. Re so viewer Chiresa, who is a frequent question asker, which I love. Um, Chiresa, thank you for, uh, for the question. The question is, can you fully turn the driver chair around and sit at the table if I don't want to sit in the booth? The big fat answer on that is yes. Let's demonstrate that. So I am sitting in the jump seat. Um, I bring the back cushion with me all the time. This is part of the puzzle bed. And I park this right here so you can lean up against the back door. And it's really nice for uh, changing seating position, for watching television, or the table extension. Look at this, this swings out. And now if I want to type, write, eat without sitting in the booth, that is a beautiful thing to do from this position here. Chiresa though wants to know about the driver's seat. So let's look at that. All right, so here I am in the driver's seat and it's clearly spun around that you can see. So I'm gonna move my big monitor out of the way back to over there. I'll just put it right here. And this will allow us to see if I can actually sit like this and use, all right guys, move this around for you. See if I can use this with my laptop. Actually, this is this is actually pretty cool. I've never sat in the driver's seat to do work, and this is a whole different vantage point. Chiresa, you're pretty sharp because I hadn't tried this, and this is really likable. So to answer the question, absolutely. So I have this, you know, back kind of driving position, but I would probably move the seat. Let's see if we can get this to come up. Which one is that one? So like that, mm, this, is, this is actually pretty damn comfy. Um, so if I don't need the big monitor, I am going to try this out. Great job, Chiresa, for asking. And it's a big thumbs up, two of them, because you can absolutely sit in this position and use the dinette and not sit in the booth. Great question, problem solved. All right, next question comes from Adam Luran. He asks, why did you choose the G floor plan over the K? Uh, I know this is a very common question, but I'm really struggling on which version to get. Um, Adam, that's a great question, and I don't think it gets asked uh, often enough. Um, I did over 300 hours of research when I was looking at um, a Class B camper van. Uh, I actually did a video on it. It's a pretty long video. It's about 20, 25, 28 minutes. Uh, I had a five-step process. I'll link that here. Um, that was my process for choosing a floor plan. And I think it really boils down to how are you going to use and live in your RV? Certainly if it's full-time, I think it has a whole different dimension than um, if you're just kind of going out for the weekend or you know, grandkids for a, a few days. Uh, but if you're going to full-time, 
and this is all the space you have, you really need to think it through. How are you going to use the space? And um, for me, the K, uh, K floor plan, while very open feeling, uh, was very limited by the bathroom, uh, the fridge, galley, um, no permanent setup for this kind of an arrangement. Um, you could only sleep two, uh, whereas uh, this sleeps four. This, you can sit five people around a table. The K, uh, the K has no permanent table. You gotta fuss with that every day. Um, the shower, guys, I've been using the shower almost every day and it's an amazing, fun RV shower experience. Love the Murphy bed, the garage storage. So again, I, I think, um, Adam, you just need to think through how are you gonna use your rig? How are you gonna live in it? Um, go spend time literally sitting in a K and a G floor plan and think through what your morning routine would be, what meal prep would be, um, private time, quiet time, work time. Um, if you're bringing people with you, um, I would really encourage you to spend some serious time seriously thinking through how you'd use the rig. Um, I would just think through the floor plan. That would be my recommendation. Check out my video. Um, I, hopefully you'll find some good tips in there, but um, you don't wanna get that decision wrong. Um, every time I step into my rig or have somebody else step into my rig, they, it, it just validates that I made the right choice for my needs. So um, great question. Thank you, Adam, for asking that. And let's go on to the next question, which comes from uh, a very avid commenter, Color Me Dubious. Question is, um, uh, would you be kind enough to test out the desk configuration that I described, which is, uh, have the driver's seat always in the driving position, which it's not currently, um, and then reverse the passenger seat uh, while camped and use the table extension as his desk. So tonight it's all about the driver's seat, passenger seat, and the table apparently, ladies and gentlemen. So let's do this. Let me clean off my junk drawer seat. Look at this. This is where everything goes. <laughs> and and let me uh, let me set that up and let's uh, find out with, for Color Me whether or not you can actually use a table extension from the passenger seat to work. Let's go. You do have a junk drawer in your house, right? I got a junk seat. Okay, so there's the passenger seat. Let's move it forward. Hang in there, guys. Okay, so that is forward. I'm going to make it so it tilts forward a little bit more. That's pretty good. All right, grab my iPad, laptop, and let's swing this around. You guys seeing this? So the question is, can you use this to work from? I would say yes. Let me swing this back. Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, laptop. So there's a little bit of a trade-off here because you're losing some of the table dimension, um, but you get a f more, I think, functional space by sitting in this position. But there is no doubt that you can use this seating position to work from. And you could even probably put your big screen here like this. So if you really want to change it up, you could do that. All right, so the last question we're gonna to answer tonight comes from um, David Kennedy. I think David is relatively new to the channel. I think that's the case, in which case, David, welcome. Thanks for uh, subscribing, really appreciate that, sir. Um, his question is, uh, will you be doing any boondocking, going to resorts, doing a little urban stealth camping? And that's a yes, yes, and yes. I've been doing all three uh, lately, and it's really kind of fun to have a mix of all three. When I was in St. Augustine, Florida, um, I, I boondocked, urban camping, I would say, um, for five, almost six contiguous, continuous days, back-to-back -back days, without having any power, uh, shore power without having any shore water and without having a shore sewer um, so I had no connections and basically went five and a half days um, and what my limitation was was my black tank because I was using my black tank uh, waste 
a holding tank um, full time. I'm now not afraid to go poop in my Travato. I do it all the time now. And uh, if you got poop issues like I do, like going to public restrooms, there's nothing better than hauling your own toilet around, folks, let me tell you. Uh, so that did fill up on about um, day five and a half. Where, um, uh, I metered the water very carefully, and electricity is clearly not an issue because um, I have a lithium system. So um, if I was using uh, the restroom at Planet Fitness or otherwise, I could have gone uh, probably another couple, three days, and if I had uh, put some water in the uh, in the fresh water holding tank, um, certainly could have gone another three or four days. So, yes, urban camping, loving it. We're gonna be testing that theory um, uh, around residential areas and what have you here very soon. Um, and I would also call urban camping uh, boondocking uh, with Harvest Hosts. I've been staying there quite a bit. Uh, and and um, Boondockers Welcome uh, is another source that I used uh, in St. Augustine and will be using going forward. And that's a site that people leave, uh, allow an RV to come onto their property to stay the night. You have to be self-contained in most cases and uh, probably not a big trailer, um, although that probably varies depending on the size of the, the property. But um, I tried that out, met a really splendid couple and um, so that just adds to the availability of spaces certainly in an urban camping setting in my opinion and then it's nice to become an rv park i mean they're, they're kind of cool you got your hookups you got like-minded people um and there's some comfort that you can kind of you know put all your stuff out and and grill without any worry can't do that in a harvest hose parking lot can't do that in somebody's driveway and certainly can't do that if you're doing some stealth street camping. Um, so I do find comfort in the RV parks um, at night. And then in the daytime, what I do is I drive someplace cool, a park, um, an interesting vista, and do work, do some video uh, from that. And I have my home with me and then come back to the RV park um, at, at night. So that's worked out really well. Um, so that's, that's a, a great question, David. Are you doing any um, boondocking? going to resorts or doing some urban stealth camping. Yes, yes, and yes. Those resources will be linked below. Um, stay tuned for more videos on those types of uh, activities as we roll forward with van life. Uh, as of this published date, I'm uh, just over one month full-time van life in my Travato, and I can't tell you how thrilled I am. I wish that you got something out of this video tonight. Thank you for commenting, questioning, Channel growth continues. Um, I want to big, give a big shout out to all of the subscribers. Look at all these people. Holy cow. Thank you to each and every one of you. Uh, it's because of you that I am doing these videos. I just want to share and, and give back to uh, the community that I learned from. And um, just want to you know, thank each and every one of you for being out there and watching. So until we meet again, I wish you to journey on. my my RV legs my sea legs under me it's it's really been a brain twist on uh, um, on uh, uh, kind of adjusting I, I must say but um, all in a positive way not a negative way um, more on that later so until we meet again I